Become a Leslie's Pro member, and with almost a thousand locations conveniently located less than three miles from your service route, you can quickly get in and out and take care of your customers. Get Skimmer, America's number one pool service software platform. Listeners of the podcast can try Skimmer for free. Visit my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, and click on the Leslie's Pro and the Skimmer banners to learn more. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, right, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about some of the benefits of a suction side pool cleaner. This is probably the favorite cleaner type for me. And in my area, most of the pools have a suction side cleaner. I'll describe what that is and go over the benefits of having these on your pool route and in the pools on your route. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. There are a lot of reasons to have a cleaner in the pools on your route. The old school thinking is, you know, if the customer has a pool cleaner, or an automatic pool cleaner, I should phrase it that way, that they're not going to need pool service. And I think that is just not true. In a lot of cases, I won't even take a pool without an automatic cleaner. And a lot of pool pros in my area have the same mindset that a pool without an automatic cleaner takes longer, you have to vacuum it, and it's much more work to maintain. So there are some benefits of that cleaner. It saves you time out there where you just spot vacuum the pool. It also keeps the pool swim ready all week long. I always tell this to the customer when I'm selling them, and this is a good tip if you wanted to try to sell these to your customers, is that these are very affordable, and it's going to, of course, keep the pool clean all week long so that if you want to go swimming on a Thursday and I'm here on a Tuesday, if the gardener comes or if you get a little windstorm, it'll clean the pool and keep it ready just so you can jump in and use the pool. And it also helps prevent staining in the pool. One thing that I like about the suction cleaners is that they're always moving, vacuuming the pool. So if something were to fall there that could potentially stain the pool, it'll pick it up and remove it. In most cases, you're focusing on the dirt because dirt has usually dirt has some metal content. And if you leave it on the bottom for two or three weeks, which wouldn't happen because you're, of course, servicing their pool. But the longer, the quicker you get the dirt off the bottom, the better it is. And also with leaf debris, the sooner that it's in the canister and not on the bottom of the pool, the better it is for the chemistry of the pool. So these are all side benefits that you can kind of explain and package however you want. You can use this and kind of make it into a 30-second sales pitch. It would sound something like this. You know, an automatic cleaner definitely helps both you and me. It does keep the pool clean and swim ready every week. It prevents the pool from getting stains from things falling in there. It also extends the chemicals in the pool making the pool safe to swim in because the chlorine is more effective when there's not leaves on the bottom of the pool. And it also saves me time, which means that I can keep the rates lower on my route. I'm not going to raise the rates as often or as high with the pools on my route because they all have automatic suction side cleaners on the route. That's probably what you need to say in a nutshell. And that's going to save a lot of time getting really into deep explaining. Most of the time, the customer will be like, oh, that sounds great. That's fine. Most people like their pool swim ready and looking clean all week long anyway. So it's not a big argument factor that the pool's going to look great all week long. Of course, there are two other main types of cleaners. I'll just touch on these briefly so you know what the suction side suction side cleaner is and what it's not like the other cleaners. There are differences. The pressure side cleaner works off of a booster pump and it's going to run in the pool with a separate pump running it. And then the robotic pool cleaner, of course, there's many cordless models now. These are nice to have, but they don't continuously clean the pool like a suction cleaner. And I'll explain that in a second when I talk about the suction cleaner. And there are corded robotic pool cleaners. So those are the three main types. Under the pressure category, you do have a return side cleaner, like the Player 360 that works off of a return jet. But in most cases, when you're talking pressure side, you're referring to, say, the Player 280, which is a pretty famous pressure side cleaner and well-known. Most pools will have that cleaner in it, and it's something that is the distinction between these three is that the pressure cleaner works off of a return line pressure with a separate booster pump. Robotic pool cleaner is plugged in or cordless, and a suction cleaner is connected to either the skimmer or a side port, which is connected to the pool's filtration system. 
So basically the easiest way to look at a suction cleaner is like if you had your manual vacuum hose and manual vac head and you were just there vacuuming in the pool for 8 or 10 hours a day. And that's kind of how the suction cleaner works. Now it may run less because if you have a variable speed pump and you're running your pool at a lower speed, say 1800 RPMs, that suction cleaner may not move around the pool. It may just sit in one area or it may move really slowly and not really clean the pool as if it was running at a higher speed. So instead of running maybe eight hours a day, it's only running six hours a day or four hours a day because you have it at a higher speed for four or six hours per day, let's say 2,600 RPMs, and then it'll be able to move around the pool. Since it's connected to the pool's filtration system, it works off of the pool suction. It does matter the speed that you're running your variable speed pump at. So again, at a lower speed, it's not gonna move around the pool effectively. But at the correct speed, which is usually a medium speed, it'll move around the pool correctly and vacuum the pool. So in the old days, I would always say, yeah, it's going to clean your pool for 8 or 10 hours a day. In reality, with the variable speed pumps, maybe it's going to clean the pool for 6 hours a day, which is still perfectly fine. So it's like you're standing out there with a pole and a manual vacuum head and the manual vacuum hose connected to the skimmer, and you're vacuuming the pool for 6 hours. It's going to be pretty clean. And if you get the right cleaner, it's going to clean the walls of the pool as well. A couple cleaners that do really well on the walls of the pool would be the Polaris Atlas or the Polaris Max Cleaner. They do really well climbing the walls. Or the Zodiac MX-6 is another cleaner that does a great job of cleaning the pool walls. Some of the reasons why I like the suction cleaner over the other type. Robotic pool cleaners need some assistance from the customer. They have to put them in the pool and they only run for three, two or three hours at that time and so if you wanted to use it all week long there are a few that you can program to run every day if you get the higher end robotic pool cleaners that are corded you can put a seven day cleaning cycle they'll stay in the pool all week and clean the pool just like a suction cleaner every day is going to clean the pool for maybe an hour or two depending on how you have it set which is not bad but most people don't do that they have a robotic pool cleaner they put in and then they take it out of the pool so the pool is not quite swim ready every day with a robotic pool cleaner, although the robotic pool cleaner probably does a better job of cleaning the pool than a suction cleaner and a pressure cleaner. It really gets the fine stuff depending on which robotic pool cleaner, and they do a great job of cleaning the pool and making them look great. They're not a bad option, but the suction cleaner just stays in the pool all week. So it's kind of one of those things where there's really no hands-on with the customer. They leave it in the pool, You're, it's in there all week long, and they have to do nothing. They can't. They don't need to touch it. The only time they're going to touch that cleaner is maybe if they have a party, they'll remove it from the pool. And it's one of those things where you have to kind of teach them and train them properly how to remove it, how to store it. And if it's on a side port, how to turn the side port off. Not a big deal, but something they consider that they do have to touch it maybe if they're having a pool party and removing it. What I like to do is have the customer tell me when they're having a party, and I'll go there and take the cleaner out of the pool myself usually on the service day, or if I'm in the area, I'll swing by and do it at no charge because I don't want them damaging it or taking it out improperly. Suction cleaners also are great because they are very affordable. They have a very low cost to them. You can find some on the internet for like 80 bucks even or $90. Those I wouldn't consider if you do pool service to purchase. Homeowners buy these things, they like them. But to me, those are what I consider throwaway cleaners. You just throw them in the trash when they're when a part breaks because there are no parts for these cleaners. They're so inexpensive. Really, I would consider spending somewhere around 180 or 200 for a decent suction cleaner. If you wanted to go the bargain route, I think the best bargain suction cleaner is still the Zodiac Ranger. The Zodiac Ranger is tagged for an above ground pool, but it works perfectly fine in an in ground pool with really no issues at all. And I still think that one's under $200. It's a great option for you. It's a bouncing type cleaner. And I guess I should describe the three categories of suction cleaners real quick. So you have a grasp of it. To me, there's actually two categories. I don't know if I said three. Two categories are the bouncing type cleaners and the geared cleaners. So the bouncing type cleaners have, for the Zodiac cleaners, they have a diaphragm. And for the Creepy Crawly Pentair cleaners, they have a flapper or what I call a hammer, but it's technically called the flapper. Some of the low price Amazon cleaners will either have a diaphragm or a flapper in there as well, and they'll operate that way. So basically that part moves with the suction of the pool water, and that part will propel the cleaner across the pool in a random pattern. So there's no 
really brain in the cleaner. It just moves around the pool randomly depending on kind of where it takes itself. It's really cool to watch them sometimes because it, you may, it looks like almost like there's a program to them because they'll go around the pool in a certain fashion, but it's just random. And so some of, sometimes they'll miss a spot here and there. So be aware of that, that occasionally it's going to miss an area of the pool. And it may miss that same area over and over again continuously. I had a creepy crawly in a pool. It was a triangle-shaped pool, kind of odd shape. And it was on a side port. And if you don't know what a side port is, I guess I can describe it briefly. The side port is what the builder puts in as a secondary suction line. So you have your skimmer, and you know that that's where the water gets sucked into the filter from the pump. And you have a side port, which is another line that's plumbed in that also has suction to it. And that's usually controlled by a jandy valve by the equipment. So that's a secondary suction line, much like the one that's in the skimmer, except it's made for a dedicated suction cleaner. So you connect the hose there with a what's called a vac lock to prevent entrapment if the hose comes out. The vac lock will close and close that particular suction line. So I had this triangle shaped pool and it was connected at the uh, side port and the creepy crawly would move around this triangle pool pretty well but there was a part on the right side of it that it would just miss every week so there'd be like actually it was kind of funny it was even a triangle shaped spot that it would miss every week and every week it would be the same exact spot with some dirt still and debris there not a big area maybe one foot by three feet so every week I would just take my pool brush and brush that and that's kind of the extent of my cleaning at that point but of course the point I'm trying to make here is that it's pretty random and the drawback with the bouncing type cleaners is the randomness and the fact that if you do have steps that protrude at a weird angle, and again, it goes to the angle of the pool that kind of gives these things trouble, but steps at a weird angle can allow the cleaner to get stuck in that area and it won't get out of there because it just bounces. And if it bounces into that corner by the steps, it's going to stay there the whole week. So big drawback in certain pools Great for other pools, especially if you have a fiberglass or vinyl pool. I highly recommend the bouncing type cleaner because it'll climb that slope. If you haven't noticed, but if you have a vinyl pool, in-ground pool, the slope is really steep and a lot of the other cleaners can't get up there. But a bouncing type cleaner has no problem with the slope because it doesn't know where it's going. So it's just bouncing all over the pool. It also does a great job with the pool walls because as it's bouncing in the pool, with enough suction, it'll bounce all the way up to the water line and back down again. There are various weights you can put on the cleaner hoses to keep them from coming too far out of the pool, but the bouncing cleaners do a great job of cleaning the entire pool, including the walls up to the water line, and they're a great option for in-ground vinyl pools, fiberglass pools, and above-ground vinyl pools as well. So that's the bouncing cleaner. The next one would be the geared type cleaner. The most famous geared cleaner is the Hayward Navigator Pool Vac. This is a cleaner that's everywhere and it's been around just about as long as a creepy crawly has been around by Pentair. And inside there are gears. One, the one that I can describe easier is the pool cleaner or the Aquanaut by Hayward. And there's a lot of gears inside there, but there is something called a cam in there. And if you can kind of think of like a watch with all the gears, that's kind of like how these cleaners are built. So in the Hayward Aquanaut, there are there's something called a cam. And as the gears are turning, like in a watch, the cam is this object that's a piece of plastic that's probably the size of a half dollar with three notches in it. And as the gears are turning, the cam is also turning. And what happens with this cam is it'll actually lock in to a plastic bar and that'll stop one wheel from spinning. And then the other wheel is still spinning. This causes the Aquanaut to turn and pivot. And it can turn and pivot depending on you know, the suction and how fast it's moving, maybe 180 degrees, 360, 400 and whatever, I'm losing my degrees here. And then that cam will actually release itself, unlatch itself from that plastic rod, and then it'll keep, the other wheel will engage and start moving forward. And so both wheels move forward about 12 to 14 feet. Then the cam will lock into the plastic rod. One side will stop spinning, the other wheel, one side will stop and then the other wheel will keep spinning, which turns and pivots the cleaner. And that's kind of the concept of all the gear cleaners. One side will lock up for the MX-8 and for the Atlas and Max cleaner. This is the directional device and that locks up, one side stops moving or one side will reverse itself actually in that cleaner. So that for that cleaner, 
It's not the fact that it locks one side, it actually reverses one side. And so now it's spinning different directions because one side is moving one way, the other side is moving the other way, and then it'll actually stop and then both sides will move forward again. So that's kind of how the gear type cleaner works. Navigator has something similar. It's kind of old technology, but basically it, it will spin because it does have gears in there that turn it. So a little different, but you kind of get the idea that the gear type cleaner is much smarter than the bouncing type cleaner. The main benefit of the geared cleaner is better pool coverage because again, if it gets to a step area where the bouncing cleaner will get stuck, the gear cleaner will engage however the mechanism is designed to engage and then it will turn itself out of that corner and go on its merry way cleaning the rest of the pool where the bouncing cleaner is still stuck in that corner because there is no mechanism to get it moving out of that corner. So if that makes sense, the gear type cleaners are much more adapt at not getting stuck. They're more expensive because there's a lot more parts in there. There's also more maintenance because of the parts in the gear type cleaner, so be aware of that. Where the bouncing type cleaners have just one moving part, the gear type cleaners have many moving parts in them but they are more effective in a lot of pools where the bouncing type cleaner would get stuck in. You're looking probably at twice the price of a bouncing type cleaner or close to maybe, you know, $500 for a good one or over $500 for a good one. Whereas you can get, again, a Zodiac Ranger for under 200. So there is a big price difference, but the gear type cleaners are better because they don't get stuck anywhere. Now, as far as wall climbing ability, I mentioned the Polaris Atlas and Max are great at climbing the walls. MX-6, Penta Rebel does a great job of climbing the walls. However, its design allows it to suck, suck air. So just be cautious about that when you're setting it. And if you haven't run to a suction cleaner that sucks air at the water line, it's a super annoying noise that can be heard as far as, you know, two or three houses down. I've had complaints from people that are down the block and they're like, hey, something's wrong with the pool you know, two houses over because I hear this loud noise at, you know, 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. It's like, it sounds like, but much louder than that. And imagine if you can hear it two doors down. And that's what happens when you have a suction cleaner that comes out of the water and sucks air. It also kills the pump priming and it'll kind of have air inside the pump pot or the wet end of the pump. And then it'll reprime itself. So it's probably not the best thing for a pool because you're going to lose your prime ever so often as it reprime itself. And it can't be good long term for the pump. So what I suggest, of course, if you want a pool that has great wall climbing ability, go with the Polaris Atlas or the Polaris Max Cleaner because the actual throat of that cleaner is set lower in the center. And it's one of those things where those don't really suck any air when they come up to the surface, which is a great design. And the Hayward Aquanaut pool cleaner Phoenix won't climb to the water line usually because it has a design that prevents it from getting out of the pool and doesn't climb the walls nearly as well as the Pentair Rebel or the Atlas or Max cleaner. Suction cleaners are also very low maintenance and so you're not going to be doing a lot of maintenance on these cleaners that often. Now the gear type cleaners of course need more parts over time but Theoretically, you can get away with probably not rebuilding a gear type cleaner for the first two years. And then maybe every time you rebuild it, you'll get another two years out of it, hopefully. The bouncing type cleaners, you're just changing the diaphragm in the Zodiac cleaners whenever it tears. Usually every year and a half, you have to put a new diaphragm in. And then there's some wear parts. You have the disc on the bottom or the fin disc. And then you also have other wear parts in the cleaner. So it's one of those things where it's really affordable to maintain them. And then once they wear out, you can just replace them with a new one. And again, they're usually anywhere from $500 or less. So not a really a big deal to worry about. And I think the main concern is, you know, the ability of the suction cleaner. And they're really great depending on the debris type. So here is a limitation of the suction cleaner that the throat is small. Maybe it's the size of a quarter. And so that any debris that's larger than that, it can't pick up or it can get jammed on a pile of leaves. So the limitation of a suction cleaner is the fact that the actual throat or opening on the bottom is small compared to a pressure cleaner where the throat size is two and a half inches. Having something that's, you know, half an inch in diameter is definitely much different with debris. Robotic pool cleaners usually have a slit on the bottom. And so the opening on the bottom of a robotic pool cleaner can be anywhere from eight inches long 
by half an inch or an inch wide so the debris that I can pick up is much more than a suction cleaner. So bottom line, a suction cleaner is limited because it uses the suction of the pool and it can't have an inch opening or two inch opening on the bottom because it couldn't, we wouldn't be able to create enough suction for it to move on the bottom. So if you look at your manual vacuum head, you have maybe a hole in the bottom that's close to an inch in diameter. And basically that's as big as you can get in order to use that manual vacuum to suck up debris with the full section of the pool. And with an automatic cleaner, you're going to reduce that because you really can't have all the suction going to the automatic cleaner. And this is a key point of why the hole on the bottom can't be an inch or inch and a half. Because if you had all the suction going to the automatic cleaner and it got to a pile of leaves and got clogged up, then the pool would have zero suction. And that means that all week long, the pool would not be running because the debris is caught in the cleaner and the pool is not functioning. So to prevent that from happening, manufacturers had to make the opening smaller so that you can connect it to the side port or the skimmer. And even if that were to get clogged up with debris, there's still plenty of flow going through the skimmer through the regulator valve on the cleaner. And the side port only has partial suction. So there's still enough water flowing to keep the pool running all week long and not cause the pump to lose its prime, run dry and burn out. So there is a reason why the opening on the cleaner is small. It's because they don't want all the suction going to the cleaner for that reason. Drawback, yes. Major drawback, usually not in my area where most of the debris is small leaf debris and dirt. So it does work great in areas, certain areas. Other areas you may want to get a pressure cleaner or a bottom pool cleaner for those areas. But bottom line, the suction cleaner has so many great benefits as far as cleaning the pool all week long, being affordable, not needing a lot of parts, and really simple to use. You just leave it in there with the hoses in the pool, never really have to touch it unless you're going to use your pool, and it's something that's affordable and easy, and it does make your service stay a lot better. If you have 14 pools with cleaners, you're going to have that much more time to balance the pool water, clean the tiles, do other things to the pool, Instead of spending all day vacuuming these pools out, I think they're great, they're efficient and effective, and the suction cleaners in my book are the best automatic cleaners that you can get on your pool route and for your personal pool. If you're looking for other podcasts I've recorded, you can find them here, and I have specific podcasts on specific automatic cleaners. If you go to my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, click on the podcast icon on the banner, you're going to see a drop-down menu of 1,500 podcasts. In the search box, just type in uh, Polaris Atlas, and you're going to see the podcast I recorded on that, or Hayward Aquanaut. You'll see that particular podcast come up. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguidecoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week. God bless. Real quick, if you're not using pool service software, try Skimmer free for 30 days at getskimmer backslash poolguy. Again, that's get skimmer backslash pool guy. Skimmer, everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app.